Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and this is part 17 of this video series. In the last part we had refactored some code for the refresh token and we made some changes in the access token. And the change was related to like we just only enhance the expiry date of the access token. We make the expiry expiration of the access token uh, quite shorter uh, and we just set it to the one minute and now it's time to check that that uh, access token is getting expired and what is happening after that so we after that we will be going towards the refresh token and before that uh, moving towards the topic some of you guys have reported okay our OTP part is not working so guys there are the cert some certain reason that might not your uh, because of that might not your OTP part will not be working. So you just go to the database first and check uh, that your email is confirmed for the user who for which you are checking. The email should be confirmed and the other thing is two factor should be enabled. This. And if this is the same then you should go to the program.cs file and here you have to check this token validation parameter match with your uh, settings if it is same then it should work and other than if it, uh, it's not working then you need to check your migration as well because the last time I was facing this issue and I uh, when I migrated this so if you're facing this issue, maybe th this will resolve your error yeah, in my system, it's, I'm not facing any this kind of error. Uh, so now let's move towards the topic. And uh, you see that I added one uh, line more uh, just before this video. Clock is equal to time span zero uh, because I had to. Mm, this clock skew time span zero means there will be no tolerance. And your expiry date, uh, expiration time will be finished. Uh, the token will not be able to, uh, will not be used anymore. Okay, so this is the change which I make for uh, expiring the token. And another thing, I saw some piece of code in the controller when we migrated some code when we were doing refactoring. Uh, so this line was also not very fine this method so you guys also have to check login with OTP you would be seeing that we had the dependency here of the sign-in manager and that I removed you see there would be no sign-in manager and in our upcoming video I will also be removing this dependency why this is being used here underscore user manager because we are using service if we are using the service we had everything injected there so why would uh, we doing it again? When I check this, one of the references left here, one or two, see why I'm doing here. I should take all these kind of things to the service uh, for the better code management. But for now it is working fine. So let's not touch this, with the otherwise video will get long. Okay, now let's run this project. Until it is running, I am showing you what changes we had made in the last video okay so we had made some changes in the token expiration see maybe this one yes see this was the change we were getting the token validity time period from the configuration app setting and whatever we are getting uh, we are adding to the add date time dot now dot add minutes. like when the token is generated after that add uh, minutes that is taking from the configuration your token will be expired and then we are passing it here over here okay now let's check it so we can proceed with the next step so I'm going to log in with my user when I enter the credential it is telling me okay and OTP has been sent over the email go and check the OTP okay here is my OTP code I'm copying this 
and coming to this method, pasting it over here. And now let's execute this. You will see I don't have any error. Okay. I got the token. And let's just copy this. Go upside, make the authorize. And authorize. Now check we are able to use the resource. Yes, we can use the resource. See, 200 error. Now let's wait for the one minute. I am pausing the video. After the one minute, I will come back and click this button execute again. And we'll see some 401 error on authorize because our token will get expired after the one minute. OK, you see the one minute has been passed. And now when I'm executing this, it is giving me some error code. It's 401. That means you're not authorized to use because your token is being expired. And it's displaying also here in the response header okay, that your token was expired by this time at this time. So this was the concept that we covered uh, now. If we, because we don't want this experience to be faced by the user when he clicks something and he gets a 401 error. So what he will be doing uh, behind this mechanism, the user will be sending a request to the refresh token and getting a new token. So we will go back to the code and we will make some new method for creating the refresh token. Now let's go back here. See, this is the method we have same. We will be creating a method. OK, what should be the hierarchy? The private method should always be after the public method, OK? And better if we can make a region for the private method. Usually, I used to do that region private methods. It looked like very unnecessary thing, but for me, it was like I feel like it's my code is easy to read for me when I see after a few days or few months. So I come to know directly this is the part for my region or private methods. Now I will be creating another one here, private string. And I will be naming it as generate uh, refresh token. var random number is equals to new byte and the byte will be 64 and var range equals to generate random sorry random number generator dot create method and after that, range dot get bytes this random number with. And let's make the return base uh, return, but it's byte, we have to convert it convert dot to base 64 this random okay so we had successfully we have successfully created this generate where we will be calling it we will be calling it on the user login where the user is getting login login with jwt token is sync here here we are returning the token see and this is what is returning the token. So we will be making change here. Okay. After we get getting the access token, look here we are getting the access token. This is access token. Now here we will be calling refresh token equals to generate. This will be get generated. Now, 
Okay, now we want the expiry date for the refresh token. So we already had written something like that here in the get token. This line. Let's make the copy for this and go upside and paste and change it token validity. Refresh token validity. Not let's take it not minute token validity and make it like a refresh token validity. So, and we have to go to the app setting as well. Same like here, we'll put a comma, make a property, and we'll make a seven days for this. After this seven days, the refresh token will no be longer working. So we'll be getting the seven days from the configuration. Now, user, oops, the user dot uh, refresh token equals to this refresh token, this string and user dot spirey equals to date time dot utc now dot add days and whatever we got from yeah. underscore user manager dot update is sync and then this so this line will be adding the uh, this refresh token so now if you go and check our this two column would be empty see refresh token and refresh token expiry is empty because we have not implemented it yet but now let's check it okay I check this login and put my OTP code and user and I got the access token here and when I go and back to the SQL server and check the query so you guys can see that I got a refresh token and this token will expire after the seven days so today is 4 December it will expire on 11 so this is what we implemented and next the next video we will be uh, making it the complete implementation. We'll be completing this implementation of the refresh token. So I don't want to make this video longer. So if you like this video, if you find this video helpful, then please like, share, subscribe. I see you in the next video. Bye.